it's a list chart, this example for that we started in the last um, video. And um, we are state restriction x cannot be zero. Now we're going to try to clear the fraction by multiplying both sides by the lowest common denominator. The lowest common denominator between the x, the 5, and the 2x. We're going to do is look at both the 5 and the 2, and they both have both common denominator of 10. And x and x is the common private common denominator also, so I get 10x. So we'll do that, we go ahead and multiply both sides by 10x. I'll multiply the left side by 10x and the right hand side by 10x. I'm going to distribute the 10x on this side. I get 10x times 1 over x equals 10x times 1 over 5 plus 3 over 2, um, plus 10x times 3 over 2x. Okay? I'm going to cross out the common factors. 5 and 10 have 2 and 1. And 2 and 10, 5 and 1, and these x's will cross out too. So now I have 10 times 1 equals 2 times 1, or 2x times 1. Just done x there. Oops. Done x right here. Plus 5 times 3. So 10 equals 2x plus 15. And subtract 15 from both sides. So I get negative 5 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2. So I get x equals negative 5 over 2. Um, I'll leave that as a fraction, an improper fraction. I think your homework will ask you to leave it that way. Um, it doesn't um, divide into a nice um, integer. So we'll leave it as negative 5 over 2. You can go ahead and check this answer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, for the sake of time, not check it. The solution is x equals negative 5 over 2. So on your own, go ahead and do the next problem. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Go ahead and pause this video yourself. And then when you check your answer, I'll turn back on and check your answer. Okay, so hopefully you pause this video and did this problem on your own. And when I solved it, I got x equals 39 over 17. And when I checked in my calculator, and I plugged in 39 over 17 into the original equation, on both sides I got 1, 7 over 78 equals 1 over 7 over 78. Both sides are equal to one another. If you have questions about how to type that in your calculator, just let me know. I use my ABC button to work with my, to work with my fractions. Okay, example 5, I want you to solve the rational equation. And again, um, on the on-your-own problem, you had restrictions. I forgot to write down x cannot be 0. Don't forget to do that, too. Okay. On the exam, I will always have, for these problems, I'll have a little restrictions note where I'll say in the direction, state your restrictions. So on example 5, we need to state restrictions. In this case, x cannot be Three. Look over here carefully. X cannot be three because if x was three, then this denominator would be zero, and then that denominator would be zero. Okay. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by the LCD. In this case, the LCD is going to be x minus three. So I'm going to take x minus three times this side, and then x minus three times this side. I'm going to distribute this. I'll go ahead and work, work on that in the next step. You have x minus 3 times x minus x over x minus 3 equals x minus 3 times 3 over x minus 3 plus x minus 3 times 9. Okay, so I did this times this and this times this. Now the next step, I'm going to clear out the fractions, so this will get cleared out with this. This will get cleared out with this. So I have x equals 3 plus 9 times x minus 3. I get x equals 3 plus 9x minus 27. 
x equals negative 24, add these two together, plus 9x. I'm going to subtract 9x from both sides. So I get negative 8x equals negative 24. Negative 8x equals negative 24. Divide both sides by negative 8. So I get x equals 3. The problem is that when x equals 3, and if you either check it back in the general equation, you'll see that I have 0 in the denominator. That's not good. And we said x could not be 3. So what you're going to do is you're going to show all this work on the exam, but you're going to say no solution. Because we cannot have x equal 3. We told ourselves x couldn't be 3. So we're going to box that in. Okay. We'll put a big x through this because we know that x cannot be 3. Please don't scribble it out or erase it because I want to know they did the work. Um, but we know that there's no solution to this example. Okay. Do another problem. Um, here we have this equation. We know the restrictions are uh, x cannot be 2. Again, that would make this denominator 0 and that denominator 0. Okay. But LCD in this case is going to be 3 times x minus 2. There's that denominator, here's another denominator, and here's another denominator. And we need 3x minus 2 in LCD. We'll take 3 times, I did, I did a different color here, so we have, okay, so here I have 3x minus 2 times this fraction, and 3x minus 2 times this side right here. Okay, it's kind of hard to see that, but the next step I have 3x minus 2 times this side of the equation equals 3x minus 2 times 2 over x minus 2 minus 3x minus 2 times 2 over 3. Again, I use the distributive property up here. Okay. Now I'm going to clear out the fractions. So this clears out this right here. This will clear out this. And the 3 will clear out here. We have 3x equals 3 times 2 minus x minus 2 times 2. And we'll go ahead and rewrite this and put this 2 out in front. So I have minus 2 times x minus 2. You remember multiplication um, or doesn't matter. So when I put that 2 out in front, it does not change the problem at all. I'm going to make my distributive property easier in the next step. So I have 3x equals 6 minus 2x plus 4. 3x equals 10 minus 2x. And I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So I get 5x equals 10. Divide both sides by 5. So x equals 2. And again, we said x could not be 2. So we're going to go ahead and say no solution. And be really clear about that on the test, you're just going to box that in. And you can even cross that out to tell me that you can't have x equal 2. Okay. Do another example. And here we need to state um, our restriction. I know x cannot be... ...4 because of this fraction right here. x cannot be negative 2. Because that would make this fraction have a denominator of 0. No idea what would make this um, denominator undefined. Let's go ahead and factor this out. Do the trial and error method there. And I have x squared is 2x minus 2x um, minus 8. This is the correct factorization. And I look at this right here, and this would make to make this factor 0, x could not be 4, which I already have here. To make this uh, factor 0, I could not be negative 2, and I have it right there. Okay? 
So let's go ahead and take my LCD at this point. It'd be x minus 4 times x plus 2 because that would take care of this denominator, that denominator, and that denominator. Then I'm going to go ahead and do x minus 4, x plus 2 times the side of the equation. The times 1 over x minus 4. And then times this side of the equation. So I did times this and then times that. I'm going to do this derivative part right now. Minus x minus 4 times x plus 2 times 5 over x plus plus 2 equals, I'm hiding around the room here, it's a little bit smaller, x minus 4 x plus 2 times this side of the equation, the 6 over x minus 4 and x plus 2. I ran out of room, but hopefully this is not too messy for you. I'm going to erase that. A little bit smaller. So x minus 4, x plus 2. Okay. And I'll clear all the fractions. This should be pretty nice when I start clearing out the fraction. This will cross off like this. Oops. This will cross off like this. This will cross off like this. And all this will cross off with all this. Yeah. So I have 1 and then x plus 2 on minus. 5 times x minus 4, you notice how I switch that order around to make it easy on myself, equals 6. The distributive property, so I get x plus 2 minus 5x plus 20 equals 6. I get negative 4x plus 22 equals 6. Subtract 22 from both sides. We get negative 4x equals negative 16. Divide by negative 4. We get x equals 4. And remember, we said x equals uh, 4 here down here, but look at our restrictions. We said x could not be 4 right here. So this means we have no solution. Sometimes. Sometimes you'll solve this and get something like x equals 7, and up here, 7 is not a restriction, then that would be fine. That would be our solution. In this case, what we solved for was one of our restrictions, we have no solution. Okay, let's talk about different types of equations. And, okay, so different types of equations, and um, let's look at what we talked about up here. So any type, generally you're going to have a conditional equation. That's what we've had lately. Conditional equations, when you so have an equation, you solve it. Let's give me an example here. You solve it and get 2x equals 14, x equals 7. You get a solution and there's only one solution, um, one value, x equals 7. That's a conditional equation. That's what we'll see most of the time. Another type of equation is something called an identity equation. And that's something like this. x plus 3 equals x plus 2 plus 1. When you start to solve this, you'll get x plus 3 equals x plus 3 when you start um, combining like terms on that side. And you might notice right away you have x plus 3, x plus 3, exactly. You have the same thing on both sides. I'm going to get ready to run out of, run out of time here, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this video and we'll start this in the next uh, part.